It's Monday, uh, middle of June. I've just got in the studio and it's noon. And I'm going to edit this video on my phone using Luma Fusion. This is going to be fun. Uh, this is going to be a, a vlog where I talk about some of the upgrades that I'm planning for the studio. I'm going to be building, oh, sorting out the streaming PC, which is going to go over on that side. Uh, I'm going to run a load of cables under the floor into the live room. Uh, hopefully, if I can find a way to do that, if there's some extra cable to pull things around with. Uh, I'm actually just using my phone to watch this. Uh, I've got loads of video to film today as well, but I've got to bring everything in and I'm going to find that computer that I'm going to put uh, a new SSD in and get Linux on it because I'm a real nerd. Got it. This beast uh, is formerly a machine that belonged to our graphic designer Raz. So thanks Raz. And I have used it on and off over the years. And it looks like there are there's only uh yeah two serial ATA connections in here. Which is a pain, but one of the things I'm going to do, you can pull this whole flap up. This machine I've upgraded to have 16 gigabytes of server error correcting RAM, which is going to be great for this being our temporary video streaming machine. And it's got a good couple of uh, slots in here for PCI Express for the capture cards. Is that an ISA slot? Jesus. I think that's an ISA slot going all the way back to the 80s. Uh, but this thing has got two quad core processors in. Now, they're old quad core processors, uh, but I installed these myself and they're not very powerful. But if I can get the graphics card to do the live streaming encoding, which I did have on that uh, revolving drive there which I'm hoping to replace next week with a four terabyte drive. In fact, I was really hoping that there were more than two uh, SATA ports on here so that I could have uh, two of them in a RAID array. But it looks like that's not gonna happen, which is fine, because like I said, this is temporary. And with this being intended as a streaming machine, it doesn't matter too much about keeping the footage uh, because it's all going to go out live and be kept on YouTube or whatever. So I'm going to go and grab a box that I've, I've bought a lot of stuff on Amazon. <laughs> so let's grab that. The box fell apart, pain in the backside. But there's a gigabyte switch which is going to go near the uh, the power line Ethernet that we've got here. Eight way power socket thingy which is going to go over there with the streaming machine so I can also plug other things in over there. Two power supplies for monitors that we've got that we just couldn't find the power supplies for so uh, that's going to bring them back to life without spending much more money. A relatively cheap 250 gig SSD because honestly no matter how old and how slow your PC is an SSD will bring it way faster. On a separate thing today I'm going to try and get this speaker cable, look at the size of that beast, under the floor so that we can have a second head or reamp station or something in here. Uh, more speaker cables so that if one doesn't reach, uh, I can put an extension on it or we can use load boxes and have them around. Cable tidies, cable ties, so I can cable tie every last cable in here if you don't already have one on. More speaker cables. And what's this? Uh, proper nitric extensions so that if I do need to clip two speaker cables together, I can be confident that they're proper re nitric and they're not going to break and they're not going to uh, do any short circuiting. And last but not least, I've been looking for my of these for ages, but this is. 
It's a speak on to jack uh, adapter because all my speaker cables that go under the floor are jack and some of the power amps and even some of the cabinets that I have are speak on only. So putting one of these on the end will change that cable into the right type of cable. But again, it's no trick. I wouldn't really use anything less when we're talking about 100 watts or 1000 watts of speaker power. So first job is going to be get this SSD in here, get some monitors down here. I'm going to set this up in the live room, actually. So that can be installing Linux off a USB that I've already downloaded an image to. Uh, I'm using the latest version of Ubuntu. Has this got some sort of shiny plastic thing on it? No, it just looks crap. Um, okay, so how to get a two and a half inch uh, uh, drive into a three and a half inch bay. Looks like it's just gonna have to sit in there, unfortunately. But that can go in there. I don't need to change anything else in here right now. I'm gonna do the capture cards probably next week because right now there's a capture card in the studio PC and it's not amazing. It's got some latency. It looks like it's doing frame drops. And as we move forward with all this, we might well be changing the streaming setup to be using something like a Blackmagic ATEM Mini. As much as this Dell workstation is very much out of date these days, it's very nicely set out. Now uh, that's all plugged in on both sides, so that clamps down. Ah, I can see where that's actually damaged the heatsink on that, but never mind. That 750 Ti from the old NVIDIA GeForce range is coming to the end of its life either way. So, remember how I'll put this on, is it that way, that way first, clunk. Right, let's get this in the other room. Alright, well the monitor lives, which that means that the power supplies work. Let's get this turned on now, it's plugged into the uh, ethernet. I uh, can't find a mouse for it, I'm going to have to do this just with a keyboard. Off at, it's off at the switch. Wait. Probably going to have to hit the delete key, key a lot. Let's see which version of Ubuntu this is loaded into because it's probably going to be the one that was on that hard disk drive that I need to wipe, which is very annoying. Actually, that's that's a really big font, so we're about to see whether that's... Oh, hello. That's going to take about a week to set itself up, which was the problem you have when you don't use an SSD. There we go. Last version, processor info, they're both good. Memory 16 gigs. ECC DDR2. Better than nothing, I guess. Boot sequence. Uh, uh, how do I uh, move that up and then move that all the way? So, USB device then on board. Serial ATA hard drive. Anyway, this bit's not so interesting, it's just setting up Linux. We'll come back to it. Next thing to do is run this speaker cable under the floor. And that's going to be some hidden treasure stuff. So, let's just move these for safety. Could turn the entire thing, but let's not. Okay. 
So, this is one of our speaker cables, and it goes under here. There we go. It's not the prettiest of things, but this is how we get a studio to work. And so, this blue cable ain't worth the time of day. One of these two USBs works, and I can't remember which, we just have to test them. But that would mean that we can run something like a USB virtual drum kit or something in here. Or even have a, a MIDI USB keyboard plugged directly in from the live room. Uh, which, if a keyboard player wants to do that, saves us channels on here. Or saves us having to have a MIDI box. All having said that, we can have a USB MIDI box in here and record MIDI at the same time that a keyboardist is playing live with a band or any of the other things that you would want a USB 2 device for but yeah, this blue USB, this blue XLR cable is very very dead but if I can see the other end on the other side then what that means is I can use it as a tether and use it to pull other cables through saves me a lot of messing around comes through to this side. So, you can see how this, this speaker cable is currently right at the very limits. So, that's going to change. Also, there are oddly unexplained cables down here. Hmm. Seems that these little thin black wires don't come out the other end. Uh, so they must have been some sort of failed experiment. Uh, they need to come. Ah. They're caught on something. That's why they never came out, because they can't come out. Okay. This one wants to go through. Now all I need is some tape to tape some cables together and I can begin to put some cables through from my bag wherever I put my bag. One of the cables I'll be sending through is this big, thick, long ethernet cable. And the reason I'm running an ethernet cable under the floor is not actually for internet purposes as, as uh, useful as that thought might be. No, this is something a bit more really nerdy and slightly wild. Uh, the, this, uh, I don't actually need this end, I've just put that on just to uh, tie these together. This is going to be, uh, come on, finish your sentence, Steve. This is gonna be uh, HDMI over ethernet. If I can get this to work, I'll be very, very happy. And this speaker cable is going down there as well. That's that's the hope anyway. <laughs> With that being blocked up down there, I don't know quite how well we're going to do. But we can but try. Yeah, see how thick this cable is. It's actually, well, it's actually a, a sane thickness of cable but it's just very, very long. This may take a while. Yeah, somewhere, hopefully on this trolley, ah, tape, perfect. Like so, and just hope that as I pull, gently, that this all goes. Oh, you beauty. Feels like it's, yeah, it's caught because I didn't travel properly. Oh, 
Uh oh. Ha! That was close to a plus catastrophe. There we go, I've got most of it through the wall. This is now testing and it's going to three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They're all connected because the other part of this is on the other side of the wall. And that means happy days. We have a winner. It's all in the right order. This is long enough that it's going to be roughly where the computer's going to be with a bit of extra length and there's loads of extra length on the other side. Let's take a look. All right, next step, this ton of cable down here is going all the way through to the vocal booth. So, let's take the tester off it. Now, the idea here is that I put far too much cable on here because this was the rest of the cable that I had at home. I've made these cables. Uh, and so I'm going to run them through the wall to the right place and then just, where it's all in place, cut off what I don't need and just redo the end because I didn't know exactly how long I was going to need this to be the plan being that this has got to go not just round to the vocal booth but round the back of everything as well and be rooted like this so yeah you've got to start accounting for extra length and I didn't have a tape measure at home and as much as I have a vivid imagination it doesn't do accurate measurements so into the darkness and void. There we go. And the idea there is that we're going to have uh, a really long HDMI to Ethernet adapter. In there, we're going to have, eventually, and I need to order it yet, a like cheap GoPro knockoff thing, an action cam, if you will. Uh, that's mounted to the wall, uh, powered by USB from vocal booth, uh, but then one that's got an HDMI out that's then going to go over that adapter all the way through there to some sort of capture card. I've not decided what yet. Might be a Blackmagic A10 Mini because those things look really cool. But that depends on the rest of the setup. So, onward! Right, uh, this is going to be a little interesting because I want to send the blue cable back uh, so I can have it for next time, but I also uh, need a way to do that. So I'm going to have to send this lovely speaker cable that we just <laughs> brought through back, uh, which kind of sucks, but that's also going to take with it uh, this blue cable which is useful for next time but also this ethernet cable with the yellow boot which is going to go somewhere in here rather than the vocal booth so then I've got a camera in the live room and a camera in the vocal booth uh, and I'm also going to have to send a sacrificial cable through so I'm going to send this blue booted ethernet cable through and then when all said and done I should be able to just pull this back to retrieve it <laughs> and still have a sacrificial cable in place. So this is a bit rough. It's gonna mean that I'm gonna send a whole convoy through, less than ideal, but that's what I've gotta to do to get under the floor. cables are through, my blue cable is still back where it needed to be, and I've got my ethernet cable with the blue boots back. Well, I seem to have taken most of the afternoon trying to get this bloody thing to work. It... I can be a nerd, but I was having problems compiling FFmpeg. Which is the thing that plays video back that makes OBS work properly and oh god I've just spent two hours on this. I had to do the whole flipping thing manually. 
nerd points then. Let's leave that ticking away all afternoon now. It's now five o'clock and I've not even started filming yet. Here we go. Right, I've just filmed an unboxing video, which is a bit weird for me, but I figured that it's something I had all this stuff to open, which I'm now going to try and put away a bit more neatly than this. Uh, but I've also been filming extra bits for the videos that are going up on Glenn Fricker's channel, which is super exciting. So I've, I've had to film extra little bits, and now I'm rendering it all out to go over to Glenn now. And that's uploading, which is why there's a cable. And that's part of the reason why I installed that uh, gigabit, uh, what do you call it, router. <laughs> Nearly couldn't find the word then. Uh, the other reason that I wanted to install it is so I can have a hard line for my laptop should I need it. And guess what? Day one, I already need it because the Wi-Fi in here is shocking. Uh, but I always prefer hard line to Wi-Fi whenever possible. So that's actually going behind the mixing desk and then behind the console, which means I'm going to need another Ethernet cable because uh, once I've done the rest of today's filming, uh, then that's going to go over. This table here is going to go over there again. The streaming PC is going to go on that. And I do need to replace that organ stool over there that's got the amps on with a proper amp rack. Uh, but that's another one of those things that I'm going to have to do at some point. And it's all coming together. So once those are exported, and I might have some food at this point because I'm starting to feel a bit... I uh, do need to drink more water, make sure that I'm uh, properly hydrated. And upload footage and tidy up a lot of this crap. Because it's a flipping mess. A well-lit mess, but a mess nonetheless. Alright, it's almost midnight. I am absolutely knackered. I have filmed a bit more on this course. I've been talking to Warren Hewitt and Glenn and Liam. And I've filmed a video for DistroKid. And I've done this unboxing, which has left this pile of crap. Uh, I'll be back in a few days. And I'll clean all this up because it's a right mess but in the meantime I have plenty to be getting on with absolutely plenty but now the computer is in situ uh, we've been experimenting with some very interesting uh, things to do with screen capture on the big machine which is now off and I've got a couple of uh, HDMI capture little cards coming from China which apparently are quite good for what they are which is surprising but you know um, we might be getting a uh, Blackmagic A10 Mini these little switches they're really cool uh, but that is it for today so oh, I need to get this light bulb fixed anyway it's time for me to go home so thank you everybody for watching uh, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already because even though this is vloggy kind of you know medium to low quality content the properly produced stuff will appear on the channel in due course and more and more of these kind of vlogs will appear because there's so much to do and i'm so happy that we finally managed to get everything compiled and working on that little box ironically i'll finish that and then I'll bet that within a matter of days we'll end up with a new machine down there because that's how it always works with me is I put so much effort into something and then almost immediately it's, oh by the way, that was all, uh, what's the word? That was all uh, for nothing, but it's always a learning experience and I've now twice compiled my own software in Linux which isn't something I ever thought I would do even in my twenties, so you know, it's always a learning process. And I hope that somebody takes something away from that. Anyway, I'm rambling and I'm tired. So I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye. Hey everyone, that might be the end of the video, but if you fancy carrying on this conversation, we have a Discord server. Link is in the description. We're also on Patreon, which is something you can really help us with. 
We also are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Hot Pole Studios. See you there.